Good evening. Let us join together in prayer. Dear God, in the busyness of our lives, we thank you for this time to slow down, be still, and release our burdens to your strong, loving hands. You are trustworthy, good, and true, and we thank you for caring for us so deeply. May we honor, worship, and adore you with our prayers, both said and unsaid. May your word today nourish, challenge, teach, and inspire us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Amen. A reading from Matthew, chapter 6, verse 7 to 15. When you were praying, do not heap up extra empty phrases, phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Here ends the reading. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, continually teach us to pray according to your will and for your glory. Amen. Do you enjoy spending time in prayer? If praying is boring or sometimes feels like a chore, perhaps we don't really know what praying is all about. Praying is not mindlessly repeating some spiritually sounding words often and long enough for God to hear us and answer our prayer based on our will. If we think of praying as a transaction where we exchange lip service to get what we want from God, then our prayer will not be answered no matter how many times we repeat the same prayer. We cannot force God to do something that is not for our good as determined by God. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Jesus began with our Father. Jesus is telling us that praying is not a transactional activity, but praying is a conversation between persons who are in a relationship. Our Father speaks of yours and mine, our personal relationship with God, collectively as a family. Praying is, first of all, outwardly focused on our relationship with God. We affirm having a Father in heaven, someone who has ultimate authority or great power over everyone. God's name is holy or set apart as special because there's no one like our good and great God. To be in a relationship with a holy God, we too must be holy so that we can honor God as God's people, as God's children. We must live up to God's reputation of goodness and greatness, of course, by the help of the Holy Spirit. We must want what God wants and not be preoccupied with selfish and self-indulgent desires. Our will must align with God's good and perfect will so that God's greatness and goodness can be fully experienced by everyone in this world, including creation. 
Therefore, faith is essential in asking God to meet all our needs. Of course, there is a big difference between what we need and what we want now or immediate gratification. So we need to listen to our hearts and listen to God to discern and distinguish what our wants and our needs are. When we are aware of what we need and God's absolute willingness to provide for our needs, then we will act in faith, in believing that God is with us no matter what happens, even if our circumstances is not what we expect them to be. We still have faith that God provides. The Lord's Prayer not only teaches us to value and maintain our relationships with God and with one another, but also how to restore broken relationships. Of course, you know that relationships are easily broken by sin, which is based on our selfish actions, either ours or other people's. And the only way to restore broken relationships is through forgiveness and repentance. The offended party needs to forgive and the offending party needs to repent. Since uh, this is supposed to be a short reflection, I will not go into in-depth uh, into the details of forgiveness. However, I want to share that forgiveness has something to do with letting go of the hurt that blocks God's grace from flowing to us and flowing through us. Not having forgiveness makes us stuck in our sin and in the effects of sin. Forgiveness, I know, is not easy, especially when we are deeply hurt or when we have suffered significant narcissistic abuse. Forgiveness doesn't or does not mean that we allow injustice or allow people to keep on hurting us. But forgiveness prevents us from our from prevents our righteous anger from turning into bitterness. When we focus only on our hurt, we will keep on relieving the hurt over and over again, like PTSD. So only in surrendering the hurt to God can we be free, and only then can God help us heal. We need to surrender our hurt to God. We need to trust God to replace whatever was stolen or broken with something even better. I like how the New Living Translation of this passage ends uh, the Lord's Prayer. It says, And don't let us yield to temptation, or don't let us give in to the temptation to be self-centered, to be focused on revenge or to hold on to the hurt. But we have to rely on God to rescue us from the evil one. The evil one might set up a trap for us, but God has the foreknowledge to, to save us and to keep us from being snared. The evil one can be the devil, or any other people who is who are against God. May God have mercy on us all and strengthen our relationship as we focus on God in prayer. Amen. Let us pray the collect for the day. 
Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. For all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for caring and healing. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for safety and protection. For all who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and soul. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. For those who do not have adequate health insurance, we pray that no family will face financial burdens alone. For those who are afraid to access care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity for public officials and decision makers, we pray for wisdom and guidance. Father, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort, and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. For healing of divisions. Lord, you have warned us that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Hear us as we pray for the healing of divisions in the life of our nation. Help us to recognize that the things we have in common are of greater worth than those on which we differ. Deepen our understanding of one another's needs and our respect for one another's opinions. And unite us in the common cause of justice, truth, and freedom. For the honor and glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of grace lift you from where you are and raise you to higher ground. May the God of peace still the anguish of your soul and bring you to a quiet place. May the God of love be your strength now and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening.